guys, APEF5 here. I'm currently holding a DSLR camera, so I might look like an idiot. I have no idea because the screen doesn't flap around on this camera. Um, you'll find out why in a minute. But I've had so much confusion recording over the years, and I thought I'd make this video sort of helping people out um, recording consoles. There's a lot you have to figure out hardware-wise with consoles opposed onto a computer. The technical difficulties with computers is usually a software factor, like some software doesn't work with other software and all those technical issues. Whereas when recording consoles, there's a lot of hardware issues you have to overcome and figure out just physically because they're less open source and you have to figure out where the audio is exporting and, um, or outputting. And computers usually already have like a head set plugs and all that stuff, whereas consoles usually don't. So I thought I'd make this video sort of showing you how I do everything. And uh, you won't be able to see my face most often because I'll be showing you around my room and just holding the camera. Um, I probably look like an idiot. I have no idea how the lighting in my room works. So um, hopefully I don't look like a zombie while I'm filming myself like this. Now first thing is setting up a capture card. Now I use the Elgato Game Capture. This is the one that can record basically anything, but it's limited to 30 frames per second, which is kind of frustrating. It can record HDMI, but it also has this adapter here. If I can get the right lighting, it's in sort of plug in this AV cable. And you can plug in um, component and composite cables. Now I believe these are called component cables. Um, this is how you record HD on an analog alternative. There's these three um, wires for the color of the console and then the audio cables. On older things, there's only one video output cable, and that is this yellow one. And I believe you just plug the yellow into the red or into the green cable. Um, it says what to do on the, the game capture software, like when you switch it to composite or standard definition. Um, and you just plug the yellow cord into, I believe it's the red, that used to be the green, but I believe it's the red, and um, it just records in standard definition. So it can record all analog output things, because this has been a standard for a long time. And then these audio cables. Now this is very useful um, for audio problems that we'll cover in the future. This is how I record my PS3, which if you come up here, this wire goes back there, and it plugs into my PS3. Um, that's the standard sort of cable people use for PS3. And I also have the HDMI cable plugged into the PS3, and um, that plugs into that TV, so when I do want to play my PS3 on my PlayStation TV, I just have to swap the video output on the output settings. Again, that's all software stuff we'll cover really quick. I'm just sort of talking about this. So what happens is the console output, so what would be going into the TV, like the video and audio that would be going into the TV is now going into this box. And then that data is relayed to your computer through this USB cord. It's a standard mini USB, so you can get a longer cord if you really need to. And I literally have to run this cord in order to get to my computer, past here, all the way over here, to a USB extension cord which runs all the way up to my computer. Um, that is not the easiest way of doing things, but that's how I do it. Now, obviously, if you weren't recording PS3, if you're recording something that only has an HDMI output, which HDMI cords um, look like this, we're all familiar sort of with this. This is the only real output you get with a PS4 or a Xbox One, they don't really have analog outputs anymore. So um, you would just plug that HDMI wire in there, the HDMI in. So let's say you bring it over to your computer now. Um, as you can see, there's the capture card. It has no signal because I'm not running anything. Sometimes it will just have no signal for absolutely no reason. Um, but this is the software that Elgato recommends. It's called just Game Capture HD. And it comes free with the Elgato. I'm not sure if it's free to download for everyone, but I guess I would suppose so. And basically when you get it, you click on that little toolbox thing and it opens this menu. 
and you choose the type of input you're using. S-Video, Composite, Component, or HDMI. If you're filming in HD, it will always be Component or HDMI. Um, composite is the yellow wire, Component is the red, green, and blue wire. And then S-Video is like an old um, video format, which probably plugs into that weird circular adapter. HDMI is probably what you'll be using. The capture card I have though does not record in 60 frames per second. Sometimes though it does. So um, maybe I'm tricking that device because it's not supposed to record in 60 frames per second. And quality. I usually don't put the quality super high because it doesn't change the resolution or anything. Now with this, I believe you can actually add in your own commentary line. So while you're recording, it will link your audio with the game audio. But the problem with recording all your audio at the same time is that um, it's harder to adjust your voice audio because then it will also be permanently adjusting your game audio. So basically the audio that would be coming out of the TV, it would be including your voice. So when you low, like say your voice gets really loud and you wanna make the audio quieter, it will also make the game audio quieter. And that's just a big frustration to deal with. However, this software also can do live streaming. So a lot of these options are for like having um, things going on while you're live streaming. I've never streamed before, so I don't know how all this works. I record everything separately, which is a more complicated way of doing things, but it's also more foolproof because if something fails, you'll have everything else still running. Now here is where it would be previewing whatever signal it would be getting. The problem with this is it delays by like 30 seconds. So if you try to play the video game while watching it on your computer, you, you wouldn't. You would not be able to play with that amount of delay. And it also delays all the audio. So what I have is I muted the game audio because say if my um, computer audio was up, the game audio would be coming out of the speakers of the computer. Because like I said, everything that's running through that capture card over there is what would be displaying on the TV. So here's the first issue you'll probably deal with. Well, how do I play the game if it delays? Well, that's what this other HDMI cable is for. You plug this into your TV and then basically it just runs straight, straight through here. It runs to your computer, it runs to your TV, and that's your console. Um, so then you're like, okay, I can play it on my TV. And if you're just purely wanting to record gaming footage, that's all you need to do. Um, that's all you need to do really to record anything through this device. However, what most of us want to do is we want to record gaming commentary. So we want to record our voice through some sort of microphone while playing a game. That can be more complicated because if you say had like headphones like this or headphones like, like the PlayStation headphones and you plugged it into the console, then all the console's audio is going to run through your headphones instead of through the TV, or in this case, the capture card. So then your game recording isn't going to pick up on your audio because you have the audio going through your headphones. However, if you keep the audio going through the TV and say you record your voice through a recording software and you plug your microphone into the computer, which I'll go over that in a minute, that'll be a problem because sure you're hearing the game, but it's also echoing through your microphone because if you can hear it, so can your audience. So then you have the capture card recording the game audio and your microphone picking up on the TV. This is what drives me nuts, is trying, was trying to figure this out. There are multiple ways of doing this um, and I have a laptop, so I use the laptop for my audio instead of running cables all the way to my computer. I could do that, you know, just have my uh, microphone and headphones running all the way to my computer, but I choose not to do that. Now with older consoles, I would use this confusing setup. Um, basically, I would get the audio cables here, and I have a thing that came with a gaming chair that I have that basically taps in to these audio channels and then runs them to a headphone jack. That's what's going on over here. The, these two things are a female and a male audio end, so I can connect 
the um, TV audio and then plug it into my capture card. That's what I originally did. And then at the end of this cable is a headphone jack. So basically the audio would still be getting to the capture card, but I would be able to listen in to the game through this. Now I understand most people don't have that. And this is why computers are usually more handy or if you have a fancy dancy TV screen. If you have a fancy dancy TV screen, you could just, when, when you um, have the, anything that's coming out of this end, so anything that's coming out of this HDMI cable, the audio out and video out, um, has already gone through the capture card. So if you could somehow tap into this, you're golden. So when you plug this into the TV, if that TV that's receiving the output from this, if that TV had a set headset plug, you could just plug it into the TV. Um, a lot of TVs, though, don't have an audio out. But if they do, that is just, that fixes all your problems because all you have to do is um, hook your headphones up to your TV to hear the game audio. Um, that's why computers are a lot easier with recording audio because you literally can just plug in your headsets and there's tons of software where you can adjust what audio output is going where. And that's how I record my standard definition games um, ever since the beginning of this. I would tap in to these audio channels and then listen through um, a headset plug. Now, when you're recording through HDMI, the PS4 on this case, this is how I learned to record the PS4 earlier before I learned that this TV actually has a headset jack in the back of it, which massively simplifies everything. If you can get a TV or a monitor that has a headset plug in the back, that will make your life a whole lot easier. Now, Elgato's Game Capture has an option to record HDMI with analog audio, which is what I'm going to be doing here. Now, what you want to do, you'll never guess this, especially since it's out of focus, is you're going to record... It's still not in focus. Oh my goodness, come on, camera. You want to record your game audio through the controller because the controller has a headset plug on it. So if you get one of these little adapters... Um, you know, where two people can listen into a headset thing. You uh, plug it into your PS4 controller, and now you plug your headset into one end, and you can hear the game audio if it's, you know, fully plugged in. So that's you hearing the game audio figured out. But now the game audio is coming through here and not through the TV. So it's not getting to the capture card just yet. In order to get to the capture card, you um, tell it to record analog audio, so it's, recall, it's still recording the video through the HDMI, the PS4 is still plugged into the HDMI, but the capture card is now going to be searching through aud for audio right here. It's going to want you to insert a yellow and red audio cable to record the game audio. How do you do that if the audio is coming through the controller? Sorry about that. You get a cable like this, which is um, audio RCA cables, but obviously the other end so you can plug it into that thing and a headset plug um, so you would plug this into this end get your headphones and plug them into this end um, I'm not going to do that because then wires are going to be everywhere and then you can plug the audio into your capture card and it will be recording that analog audio the digital video and you'll be able to hear the audio through this side of the headphone jack. Now, that is, again, very convoluted. Once I figured out, I could just listen to the audio from the TV. Now, here's where things get complicated, even more so. Right now, I use my headphones for both audio and listening to audio. So, my microphone is attached to my headphones. However, if you have a USB microphone that's pretty much what you'll need. It's the same concept. So say this is your external microphone and this is your headphones. So you're wearing headphones and you have an external microphone um, and say you have like a rig where you have the microphone attached like somewhere in front of your face so they can hear what you're saying. Um, you'll plug that microphone into your computer and um, the capture card will also be plugged into your computer if you don't have two computers for completely pointless reasons. And you'll plug um, this end of or this end of your headphones or your headphones into either the audio jack you jerry-rigged onto the back of your TV or into your controller if you did that method like I was talking about or into the fancy adapter and you tapped in 
to this audio thing here. So the audio is now going to your ears, which is good, so it won't be echoing through your microphone unless you listen to stuff very loudly. And then what I do is I just use QuickTime Player, but you can use Audacity or whatever you want. You select your microphone of choice, and you press record. Now you have to figure out how to sync up audio, but first let me show you everything in the works. So first I say, hey, today I want to record that thing. And I do not want to record uh, my PS3 with all its analog audio stuff. So I have the two options. I can either record from my controller or from the TV audio, but first I have to obviously get the PS4 plugged into my capture card. So what I'm going to do is instead of recording analog audio, I'm just going to plug my headphones directly into the monitor. So first, find the HDMI wire that's um, exporting the video and audio from the PS4. My, my setup's a little overly complicated because I leave the PlayStation VR plugged in, but um, hopefully you will not have that issue. <laughs> so now you have the PS4 plugged into the capture card. This wire is going to your computer. This wire is going to your TV. So if the PS4 is on and the other HDMI wire is plugged into your TV and this wire that's plugged into your computer over there is set on HDMI, um, the picture should appear on your TV. There it is now telling me to update, which is typical of modern consoles. And currently I can actually hear this audio running through my surround sound. So what I do is since I have surround sound set up, this is going to be even more confusing for you, but I have to turn off my surround sound so you don't hear that echo. In your case, you would mute the TV so no audio is going through the TV speakers. And then you plug your headphones either directly into the back of the TV or get an extension cord so you don't have to reach around the back of the TV, um, you know, just like headphone jack to other headphone jack just to extend the length of the um, plug in the back of the TV. That's what I have done right here. This is just the audio of the TV and an extension cord. And I plug that into my headphones. Now, if I wanted to record a face cam, I believe the software over there might only be for streaming, but I believe you can actually sync a face cam with that um, using like a webcam or something. Um, but I choose to use that Sony Handycam I videoed like five years ago. Um, because it has a flip around screen so I can see myself and I can know where I am in the frame which you can see me holding my big DSLR camera right now and I'll set that on this tiny little mount here and uh, adjust it so it looks directly at myself this mount was originally for a dash cam <laughs> but you can find like little tripod mounts or if your setup isn't on a desk that's you know, sitting on the floor, you can actually use a real tripod. So that'll be pointed at me. I have that basically hooked up to my computer now. The audio and everything's going to the computer. And then, you know, everything's coming back out and into that TV. And then I have the audio from the TV going into my headphones. And then I have my headphones plugged into, you know, computer um, to record the audio from my headphones. But that also could just be if you had a USB microphone. Now that you got everything set up, here's another complicated part. How the heck do you sync everything? Like, if you're recording that, and you're recording your voice, but they're not recording together, how do you get your voice at the point in the video? So say you have an audio track here, and you have the game recorded over there. How do you get your reactions in sync with the uh, game audio? Well, that is very simple. At least this is what I do. I get the microphone, I speak into it, and simultaneously, I'll get the controller and I'll press down, up, down, up. And then I know when I'm syncing the audio that when I'm saying up and the thing is moving up on the TV screen, that's that's the reaction you're getting. That's where the audio should start. Now with th the um, camcorder over there, if you want to sync, obviously, your microphone audio with the camcorder audio, all you have to do is clap or have a clapper board or just make a loud noise that you can sync visually with that camera, which is why they have the, you know, the things that go clap 
in all the movies. Um, because what they're doing is that when that board or when your hands finally clap, you can sync that audio spike um, that the camera is receiving and that your microphone's receiving. That's all done in editing. So every time I record my PS4, this is what it looks like. I have all these wires headed over to that computer to record the actual PS4. Um, this could be over there, but I use this to record my audio. And then I have my headset plugged into my TV. Before I used to have my headset, you know, plugged into here, and then I had the analog audio going to this pit of the recording, and I was recording analog audio separate with the digital audio. And then prior to that, I was just using that adapter thing that basically tapped into this connection and brought it to a headset, which I'm, I'm currently using that for other purposes. Um, that I won't go into right now, but this is what that adapter looked like. As you can see, it, it taps into the, the connection there, and then it leads to a, a headset at the end or at the other end of it. Okay, so this computer is basically what you would see if you were, um, you know, recording things on a Mac. You have the Elgato Capture software, which is basically the same as if you weren't recording on a Mac, it all looks the same then whatever you're using to record your voice audio. Um, and it would be on Turtle Beach. So you would click, you know, you would have your capture card set up, you would press record, have your audio set up, you would press record, and then, like, say you were in-game, this was recording the game, you would go, like, up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, and then you could sync the audio properly um, with your voice audio recording over here. So what that would look like in the editing software, this is Final Cut Pro, the software I use, is you would have the game uh, visuals. Hang on, I need a new project. <laughs> so you'd have the game visuals. This is just, you know, the game. This would be super easy to record if that was all you're doing was getting pure footage of video games. Um, your voice audio. So you'd have your voice audio down here. And you usually want to bring the game audio fairly far down, make it sound proper. I used to have my game audio equal with my voice, and you never could hear my voice. And then the face cam, if you chose to record the face cam separately. So you would drag the face cam up here. And what you would do is see how the camera audio is up here. You would then um, sync that by clapping. So we'll find the point wherever I decide to clap. Usually you want to clap right at the beginning of recording, but in um, the Horizon Zero Dawn video, you probably realize that it took me a while before I clapped. I think at some point, some point around this part, I said, oh, I better sync the audio now. So this is when I started syncing the audio. Um, so as you can see, like these wave markers here, kind of look like these wave markers over here so you can just roughly adjust it yeah now everything seems to be semi in line um, obviously the lip syncing is not going to match because it's not perfect right now so right here i start going up and down up and down on the you know menu bar and i would say up down up down and you want to zoom really far in to where i start saying up down up down as i'm moving the uh thing up and down. I'm not going to do this too perfectly, but basically right here is right before I'm about to move down. And this is the first time I say down. So you would pretty much move this here. So it would be down, 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 and whatnot. As you can see, I'm clapping up there, which means it's completely off sync. So you want to go to wherever it sounds like I'm clapping on here. It looks right here looks like where I'm clapping. I really should have cropped this audio in the beginning, but this is just a test. Um, so as you can see, I'm clapping and the audio down here is supposed to match up with the audio down here. You really need to like zoom in as much as you possibly can because this is going to be your lip syncing. And if it's even slightly off, people will notice and you pretty much want to line that up perfectly. I usually put it a little bit behind because my, um, camera is slightly faster than my audio so it will catch back up to it but this is you know within a half a millisecond of each other um where want, where you want the audio to be synced and then you just mute the the camera audio and you have your fancy quality audio microphone going you have your face cam going and you have the game audio going on 
this line here. And if you feel satisfied with that, like you don't think you're going to make many audio changes, you can just highlight the whole thing and hit new compound clip. And then the whole thing is one clip and you can just edit it like that. Now, obviously I did more work on this video. I made my face cam a square. Um, I did a lot of touch-ups on the audio. That's what I spend most of my time on. And um, that means I'll have to cut each individual clip. There's probably a more efficient way of doing that, but that's how I do it. And I just want to clarify, you don't need all this fancy stuff. When I started off, I recorded really horrible videos using the QuickTime screen capture and the built-in computer microphone, which did everything for me. It was really bad, but that's how I started off. You don't need all this fancy stuff. And most of the famous YouTubers didn't either. They were using um, everything, you know, combined into one. There's even a cheap standard definition Windows capture system that requires, like, installing software. It might not even work on modern computers, but I saw those for, like, $15. They were really cheap capper devices that only worked with composite outputs. So you can go and start from there, or you can sort of invest in a capture card and then just record your audio on whatever cheap microphone you have. You don't need to put a ton into this um, when you're starting off. You know, make a couple videos and see if this is for you before you go all the way into it. Um, and I haven't gone all the way into it, as you can tell by the way, I don't have a professional microphone yet. I continue to use the built-in microphone on a, like, four-year-old Turtle Beach pair of PS3 headphones. Um, so you don't need the, the latest and greatest um, thing to make it in the YouTube lands. I have no idea where to, you know, point this, as I was saying earlier. But, uh, yeah, so that's it. And I'll see you guys in the next video.